we are going to see some people get vegetated, and tragically, tragically, it's not going to be Theodore. Compromised to a permanent vegetation. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so the shuttle goes out. One thing with this movie and with Moscow Cassiopeia before is that the practical effects are really good. And the, like, 1970s Soviet attempts at CGI are laughably bad. Oh, they're beautifully terrible. Yeah, which, which is helped by the fact that, like, there is literally only one CGI green screen shot in this entire movie. So I do not know why they couldn't have just done... And it, all it is is the shuttle moving towards the camera with stars in the background. This could have been done with practical effects. They had the prop. And it is so awful. And, like, we see the shuttle being moved around. Like, it could... Uh, I don't know. It's it's really bad. It takes you out of the movie how bad it is. Um, That's the one and only thing that takes you out of the movie. Otherwise, cinematography masterpiece. Yeah, otherwise you'd have no idea that this movie was made in the 1970s and not made with uh, modern computer imagery. I'm sorry, at the start of the last movie, ASA said this was a documentary, and who am I to gainsay him? Uh, if you go against him, you, you're just going to get turned inside out, bud. He's no, you're, you're, you will never have been. He will, he will go back in time and not fuck your mom. Consider that I'm... despite, <laughs> despite all of his power and prowess, he is now dead. Well, his actor is someone else just needs to like take on that role and then be inhabited by it. I don't think anyone, I don't think there's going to be another human alive that can replicate that hairline. The more you say it, the more it just becomes real. So yeah, they they land on the planet, and just like the other Soviet movie we reviewed, Planet Abur, Planet of the Storms, they run into life within like a microsecond of landing. And in this case, it's just a bunch of white beach balls being bounced down a hill while making like aggressively loud squeak and mouse noises. Pavel and Varya start doing their experiments. Fyodor does Fyodor stuff. Um, he tells them that he needs to piss and then runs off. And uh, immediately pisses on an alien structure and then graffitis it. Just par for the course. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, like, for better or worse, he is the driving force of this plot. Uh, like, he p purely exists to make things happen. He's the reason why they're here 27 years early. And as he graffitis this portal, a bunch of aliens come out and confront him. And I really like the design of these aliens. They are like Hellraisers in bell-bottom leathers. I want... Yeah. That, <laughs> yes. There is no further need for description. And they've got some, like, they've got some minor Star Trek greebles here and there. But, they're, yeah, they, they've got, like, spiky hair. And, interest, like, they only communicate in whistling, which I find very funny. Every single... And the cosmonauts we, uh, we saw in the last movie, they have a translator that can, like... It can translate dog. It can translate anything. They're able to translate the whistling into words. And Theodore tries fucking with these, uh, these guys, these aliens, and they immediately abduct him. They just grab him, and they walk through the portal, and then he's gone, thankfully. The problem has been removed. <laughs> uh, also, they exclusively move around by, like, they saunter. They kind of do this, like, jazz step that's really cool. That is, all, that is the only way these robots are allowed to move. It's just pierce movement. No, you can't call them robots. We don't know they're robots yet. That's no, no, we don't know they're point. robots. Absolutely not robots. Although they do, I believe they introduce themselves here as implementers. So, again, this movie does this thing where it splits the party, you know, it cuts the whole crew into half, and then we have to go back and forth and back and forth. It's kind of like Planet of the Storms that way. So while the ground crew... The away team. The, while the away team is getting abducted by aliens, the space team which is Victor, Yukaterina, Mikhail, and Julia, they are uh, confronted by, like, this spinning cylindrical ship. <laughs> the, the, the tube just spinning through space. Yeah, it's, it's just this tube. It's got this kind of, like, telescoping end that looks kind of like a gun. And everyone, there's this kind of tense scene where everyone's just like, hey, what, like, we need to blow this thing up before it kills us. They're going to shoot us with the tube. How to put this? Victor makes peaceful contact with these aliens and invites them onto the ship. Um, he takes them to the hollow deck to kind of like, oh, we're going to show you our world. They have a, and again, these aliens exclusively communicate by whistling. Uh, they don't really have any kind of cool design to them. They're just kind of guys in suits. Yeah, I was about to preface this by saying that um, 
how did you describe it, Chris? You called it anthro chauvinism. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in space has to be a human. Duh. Well, yeah. We evolved that way. And, and that's a point that they touch upon in the movie where they're like, oh, of course, they would have to look intelligent like us design. To be intelligent. Yeah. Also, every single one of the aliens is white for what it's worth. This is the optimal. I'm, I'm reading too much into this, but yeah, like this is the optimal evolutionary path. They look exactly like Russians. Except one of them who is bald, and that's important and will come up later. Yes. They have a, a young, bald lad. Young, in air quotes. Well, yeah, he looks like he's 40. And <laughs> there's this kind of cute scene where, like, I like the alien whistling as a way to communicate, but I also, like, they can't keep that up for the entire movie. So the way that they teach these aliens to speak Russian is they, uh, they take out a dictionary and it, it plays the entire dictionary. It, like, starts off, like, one word, two word, and then it, like, super speeds up. And then by the end of, like, five seconds, all of these aliens can just speak perfect Russian. Yeah, they play their mixtape and they learn how to speak like that. And now that they are able to communicate with these guys, we learn the plot. We learn the alien plot, which is that this is a Terminator movie. <laughs> Terminator with aggressive jazz walk. Yeah. Yeah, well, this we, is, learn, this is... we, learn, we learn that the Hellraisers and bell-bottom leathers down on the planet are robots that they created to serve them and take care of them and the robots are uh they went they went a little too far and uh trying to think of the best way to explain this they're like conservators and their whole thing is like you can't have anything except being happy and that also means that we're going to remove every other facet of your psyche <laughs> in order to accomplish this being smart has the potential to stress you out um, having like artistic passions has the potential to stress you out. Like what if you do art bad and then you're not happy? They're, so they're just going to turn you into a smooth, unblemished having orb. Having free will yeah. stresses you out. So we're just going to turn you into like a fucking like <laughs> drooling, drug addled fucking hollow shell of just dopamine. Yeah, they're just going to hook you up to the machine that makes you bust. Theodore should have experience with this because Theodore did this to himself in the last movie. He hooked himself up to the brain scan machine and cranked happiness to max. <laughs> like, gave himself an auto lobotomy. <laughs> the auto lobotomy. So, basically, with these robots, we learn that there is another kind of cast of robots. So, the, the, the guys in the Hellraisers are called implementers. And above them, there is a special cast of meliolator robots. Um, and these are the smart ones who kind of handle everything. And yeah, they have been, for the past 200 or so years, they have been purging this alien species by making them super happy. And crucially, this also, like, it makes them so happy they don't uh, have any kind of, like, sex drive anymore. Which means that on this planet, the alien population died out, like, 150 years ago. And the only survivors are people who happened to be living off-planet in the kind of rotating cylinder thing. The rotating cylinder thing that they were debating about blowing up at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. How tragic would have that would have been. Genocided the last of a species. Making the real jump out there. So I mentioned the meliolators. We see them back with the ground crew. So the ground crew by now has been totally captured. Theodore has effectively led the robots back to them. They all get taken to this like underground like robot base and they meet the meliolators. And the meliolators are very interesting. Зачем вы прилетели к нам? Вы просили о помощи. Мы о помощи не просили. Просили, мы приняли ваши сигналы. Сигналы были не наши. Как это не ваши? So if the if the implementers are hellraisers in like boot cut leather short, uh, pants, the bell bottom leathers. Yeah. Then the meliolators are like they were, they're dressed in all white. They have all of these cables coming out of their bald heads. Some of them have like a prosthetic makeup to make their heads look kind of blocky. And they are all wearing glasses with like lenses set up in just the right way that it looks like they have eight eyes. Uh, this will be on the Patreon post. It's a very cool visual. I like how these guys are designed. They are properly weird. Yeah. And like it's it seems pretty easy to have set this like they get a good effect out of very little which is kind of care, uh, actors who know how to be menacing and like weird fucked up glasses. Damn, they really screwed up the prescription. Yeah. 
and they are I called it Terminator. I think, Chris, yesterday you had a good point that it seemed kind of more like the Borg. Assimilators. Yeah. I, I, I at first interpreted it, oh, well, they're just assimilating. But no, they're, they're really just out-of-control caretakers. Yeah, I've played Stellaris. <laughs> and they also have their own... So the Borg have resistance is futile. The, uh, the Meliolators have we will make you happy. We'll make you happy. 